Hey guys, uh, welcome back once again to HBC Tech. This time I'm going to show you how to properly recover Freon from an air conditioning system. But before we do that, let me talk about some information about recovery. Um, the recovery we're going to do today is called the active recovery. And after the active recovery, it has to do with using a recovery machine like this one and a pressurized recovery tank like this one. So what we're going to do well, what the machine, actually the machine is going to do is going to uh, get all the free end from the air conditioning unit and it's going to send it from the machine, from the condenser to the machine and from the machine to the recovery tank. It actually is going to uh, take it and uh, push it into this small tank. So this is, this is what they call active, right? Um, there's another system which is called uh, passive recovery. Uh, we're not doing that one. It's pretty much it's something that we've done no more. This is back in the day they used to use uh, a, the same air conditioning system uh, to push the refrigerant into a plastic bag. And we don't do that anymore. We, now we're doing the active because we, we've got to use the machine and the recovery tank. All right? There's also, in the process of me doing the recovery, we're also going to be talking about minimum release. Uh, a lot of these recovery machines they cannot pretty much 100% uh, take all that freon. So uh, some of this freon that is gonna be uh, pretty much not able to put it into the tank is called minimum freeze, okay? Also gonna be talking about the perch, the air from the hoses. That's another important thing. Um, you know, they say that uh, uh, the technicians, they should do the best as possible and uh, whenever they recover freedom from the system, it's not to recover air or moisture into the recovery tank. So we're also going to be covered up by the perch and the air from the hoses. Right? Also, we're going to talk about vapor recovery, liquid recovery, and um, a couple of things about the recovery machine, recovery tank, and the digital scale. Okay? So now let me show you a couple of tools that we have here. And um, you guys need to have a, a digital scale uh, especially designed for for recovering free end. We're also going to have a recovery tank and make sure this recovery tank is approved to recover R22. That's what we're working on, on R22 refrigerant. Um, you can see your uh, maximum pressure on the DOT 4BA400. So this is, this is, you can recover either R22 or even you can recover 14A, okay? So this is especially for that, okay? And then also, we're gonna, you're gonna have to have some uh, tools, your gauges. Don't forget your extra holes for uh, the recovery process. You also, and this is something optional, you don't have to. You can also use uh, what is called a core uh, pin remover. And what I did, uh, I really took up the pin, the core pin from the system. And why would you want to do that? You know, when you remove the pins from the air conditioning system, from the service valves, it actually, the opening becomes bigger. So your recovery, recovery rate will be faster. So it doesn't take that long, it's actually faster. And when you charge the system, also it's faster. So every time you're doing recovery, it's recommended, you don't have to, but it's recommended to use a core, core pin uh, removal tool, all right? Uh, you can have two of them if you want to. I just put one on the low side, all right? And um, this is the caps. So there you go. Those are all. And I almost forgot, of course, you need to have your recovery machine. As you guys can see, there's a filter dryer connected into the recovery machine with the cap. And the whole purpose of this is to protect your recovery machine. These machines are very expensive, you know, they go from $500 to $1,000. So you want to protect it. Anytime you recover Freon, make sure that, you know, you've got metal pieces or either uh, sludge, anything that it can, actually, it can actually go into the machine is going to be protected by the filter dryer. So make sure you guys add a filter dryer. This is the closed position from the valve. This is the closed position of the valve. This is the pressure in the system. And this is the pressure on the tank. And this is the switch. Okay, so now let's do the process of recovery. First, get your gauges, hang your gauges somewhere, just from here. There you go. 
grab your low side holes and your high side holes and connect them into the system. Now remember, I already have the core pin removal. So my low side is connected to the low side. There you go. All right. And then uh, your high side pressure connected to the high side pressure of the system. Let me move away. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. And there you go. I got it in there. There you go, make sure you open the valve. Make sure all the connections are tight. And since we're gonna recover the freedom from the system, make sure the, um, remember, I took up the core pin from this, so that's why I have it closed. So now let me open it. So now the refrigerant goes into the system, and this one's already refrigerant going to the system. So freedom from here is actually going to these hoses, and if you follow me, it goes back into the gauges. And there you go, we got freedom in the system. Okay? Make sure your valves are closed. The two valves on the, on the manifold, make sure they're closed. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to purge the hoses, all right? Make sure everything's tight. Now let's follow the yellow hose, and that should be going to the recovery machine. Connect it right here. Make sure you don't lose the caps. Connect your yellow hose right here. Make sure this is tight, make sure this is tight. Now, remember, we need to purge the system and we're gonna do that in a second, okay? I'm missing one more hose. This is the, the extra hose that we're gonna need. And this is the ones going to the recovery tank. Remove the cap from the recovery machine. Connect the hose. And then, once you connect the hose, grab the other end of the hose and connect it to the tank. Now, since we only have maybe about a pound of freon, maybe a pound and a half, I'm gonna connect it to the vapor. You can also connect it into the high side, but if you're recovering uh, liquid. But since I know there's very uh, a small amount of freon, I'm just gonna put it into the vapor, connect it, okay? And then, make sure you put your tank on top of the scale. Make sure you turn around your scale. Takes a minute. Make sure it says zero. And if it doesn't zero, you can press the button tear. Okay. And then put the tank on top of it. Cool. Now, if you guys can see the numbers, it says 12 something. No problem, just make sure to press tear, or we can do that once we purge the lines, okay? By the way, follow this. If you want it to be precise of how much Freon goes into the system, make sure this hose, this one, it just goes into the ground, make sure it's not hanging. Because if you end up with the hose hanging like this, it's gonna change the numbers a lot. So make sure it's on the ground, make sure you don't move it for whatever you, you got it from, don't touch it. So you don't change the pressure on the scale, right? So now, let's start the process. Number one thing for recovery of freedom, by the way, make sure the system doesn't come on. Make sure you pull out the disconnect, make sure it's 100% off, and the first thing you gotta do is open your gauges. We're gonna send the freedom from the system, from these two, into the yellow hose. From the yellow hose, it goes into the recovery machine. From the recovery machine, you open the low side. You can hear it start making noises. Then it goes inside the recovery, uh, inside the recovery machine, and then comes out into the out, into the red, red hose. Follow the red hose, and before you open the tank, you have to perch. This is what is called perch. And perch is removing air from the system. You could do it maybe two seconds, close to three seconds, you know, a little bit. That should be enough. And once you purge the air from the, from the recovery machine, from the hoses, now you can press tear. And there you go. Now, remember, 
try not to move anything around and um, let's recap gauges open recovery machine open open purge and then you gotta what open the tank a lot of time as, as soon as you open the tank you're gonna hear refrigerant going inside the system because there's a lot of pressure here but if you hear anything don't worry about it we gotta turn on the recovery machine and watch it I'm gonna turn on the recovery machine the gauge's pressure is going down and we're doing pretty good now follow me over here as the pressure is going down this gauge right here by the car machine it also is going to go down but this is very small gauge so you're not going to see the difference a lot on this one this is the pressure of the recovery tank so make sure this one doesn't go over 200 psig 250 at the most try to keep it down okay now follow the red holes it goes to the machine to the recovery tank and look at the numbers now remember we started at zero it's zero uh ounces zero pounds look at it's four something pounds i mean ounces and it's recovering the free and right let's go back to the gauges have a lot of free on the system maybe about six ounces but that's okay the whole purpose is to show you how to do the recovery it's not about how much how many pounds you're recovering just how to do the recovery so it's, it's going down now you can see it's below the zero psig on both the gauges so what you can do it says you're supposed to Close the gauges now, first, and then shut up the recovery machine. You're supposed to wait a couple of minutes because it says that um, a lot of times uh, the oil uh, will actually traps the refrigerant. So sometimes, once you're done with the recovery, you see I close the gauges, you're gonna see this gauge going up. And why is it uh, pressure going up again? Because once again, the oil traps the refrigerant. So as you do a little bit of vacuum, the oil is gonna be able to release that freon and then give it to the recovery machine. As we, as we took, take a look back, you see that the gauge is not going up again. So that means there's no uh, refrigerant trap in the oil. So then we can finish the recovery. So we already closed this. There's no pressure going back, so that's good. And then, remember we shut up the machine you can actually close the valve right here, close the valve coming into the gauges, and you can also close the refrigerant coming out of the recovery machine. You follow the, the tank, make sure you close the valve on the recovery tank. And it's very important that before you touch anything around here, take a look how much it's been recovered. So 5.50, so that's only five ounces of freon, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you something here that everyone understand. Um, the, the word minimum, minimum release, you know, we try to do the best as possible to recover this freon, but if the system is not able to complete 100%, this is what they call the minimum release. Make sure this tank is closed. You gotta remove your equipment. You hear that? That's your minimum release, and this is something that, uh, you can't do anything about it, and um, you, we did the best practices possible, but that amount of freon, it's something that uh, uh, you cannot recover 100%. Okay, so there you go, guys. We're done with the recovery. The system is 100% empty, and all the freon is on the recovery tank. Uh, the machine is gonna have a little bit of freon once again. Some of these machines, they have what it's called perch, so you can also do a perch. It all depends on the recovery machine you guys have. Okay? So, we cover the um, recovery. Uh, we cover the vapor recovery, the liquid recovery. Uh, your recovery machine, 
the recovery tank, and the digital scale. Okay, so guys, um, hopefully you guys like this video, and um, I'll see you guys uh, next time. All right, take care.